Hello and welcome back everyone. So in, in the last video, we saw what an income statement looks like. We, we saw that it's really an extension of the profit formula, which is profit equals revenue minus cost. So the income statement starts with the entry of the revenue, which is your sales, of course. And then from there, you deduct first the direct cost of production, then the indirect cost, and then whatever profit you have left that gets divided amongst the shareholders at dividend you've got to pay your taxes you've got to pay your interest and whatever is left over we call that retained earnings now in this video we're going to learn how the accountants of the company have to change the income statement or, or amend the income statement when businesses take different actions or when certain activity takes place within the business meaning that when there's increase in sales what happens to the income statement when a certain type of cost goes up what happens to the eventual retained earning of the business and that's what we're going to look at additionally you could get a direct question on this in your exams and they're not very complex but you still need to know the format of the income statement to be able to figure out exactly how to solve them now there are a few things that you need to remember when you're amending income statements this is just remember learn them however you make sure you have it and in, in your mind first of all whenever you're given a question in the exam use the same format okay, they will give you a table and in that table they will give you either an, an entire income statement or an extract from an income statement so whenever you are asked to make changes you use the same format as is given in the question secondly Whenever there's a change in the number of units, so, let, so let's say a company is producing 100,000 cell phones and now they want to produce 120,000. So whenever there's a change in units, of course, you're selling more, but that also means that your cost of production is going to go up equally. So a change in number of units will impact cost of sales, of course, the direct cost, and your revenue because you're going to be selling more as a result as well. So we will see that in one of the questions as well, that how this change impacts the entire income statement and finally just remember that an income statement and a statement of profit or loss are the same thing it's two uh, two different terminologies from now on the more modern the modern term the more commonly used term has become statement of profit or loss So this is a question that appeared in one of the CIE exams in 2018, November, paper 32, and it's part of question number two. And in this question, of course, this was associated with an entire case study, but I've taken out a little extract that we need to solve the question that was given in it. And in that, we were asked to do these things. The finance director of that case study forecast that compared to the income statement of year ending 30th September 2018, which is this income statement given to us, shown in Appendix A, the following changes would occur during the year ending 30th September 2019. So this is for 2018, and they're expecting that when we make the income statement for the year ending 2019, these four changes would have taken place. What are they? Number one, revenue increases by 10%. Cost of sales increased by 5%. Sales expenses increased by 2 million. Probably marketing agencies ask for more money. And the dividends increase to 40%. So an increase in dividends will obviously make the shareholders happy. So you are asked to make these changes to this appendix or this income statement that you're given here. Now remember from our last uh, page, I told you that whenever you're given a uh, a statement in the question you use the same format so what you simply do is you make a column next to this income statement just like this all right and then you solve all the things in this column here because this new column the one that we've just made is now our new income statement for the year ending 2019 so we're gonna make changes according to what's given here so let's begin with the first one. Revenue has increased by 10%. Last year it was 80. 10% of 80 is 8. So I'm just going to write plus 8 here, which makes this 88. You're going to have to excuse my handwriting. I'm working on it, I promise. Cost of sales increased by 5%. So 10, 10, 5% of 10 is 0.5. So this becomes 
10.5 that does not look like a 5 slightly more okay <laughs> now when this happens I can now solve my gross profit so revenue minus cost of sales is my gross profit this becomes 77 and a half okay so I've got my revenue done my cost of sales done now my expenses go up by 2 million here which means this amount will go up by 2 million so plus 2 which means this becomes 55 I can solve my operating profit here 77.5 minus 55 gives me 22.5 that's my operating profit after that we're not given any changes in the question for financial expenses or the corporation tax so we're just gonna solve that here financial expenses we would assume that they remain the same so if it was 5 in 2018 it's 5 in 2019 as a result my profit before tax now becomes 17.5 because of course your expenses are deducted from your operating profit which is what we've done here then your corporation tax is at 15 percent now this is very important so pay attention what you have to do with your corporation tax is that you have to apply it to the value of profit before tax okay not operating profit not gross profit profit before tax so the tax percentage has remained the same 15 percent however the profit before tax is now 17.5 not 12. so 17.5 is I, if I apply 15% to it, this gives me a number of 2.625. Of course, this is something that's paid out of the company's uh, profit, so this gets deducted. 2.625. This gives me a number of 14.875. Okay, uh, keep it to minimum two decimal places if the number is giving you three decimal fi figures just go with that but minimum two is advisable okay now when we're looking at these changes here we had done the first three and now we get to a part of dividends which is at 40 percent okay now of course dividend will be charged at the amount of profit for the year which is 14.875 now this times 40 percent tells me that this year the company will be paying a total dividend of 5.95 with that information I can deduct 18 well sorry 14.875 minus 5.95 this gives me a return earnings of 8.925 that is all the changes incorporated into the new year so for 2019 we can see that the company will actually be making a higher return earnings number it's probably because of the fact that their revenue has gone up by more than the cost has gone up the tax rate has remained the same um, financial expenses will also remain the same and they've been able to give the shareholders a higher dividend and still retain more in the company so this has clearly been a good year